Hi everyone and welcome to my next organic video. Today I'm going to be talking about the chemistry of alkanes. Alkanes are, in my not particularly humble opinion, the most boring organic compounds out there. Let me tell you a little bit more about them. Okay, we're going to talk about the properties and descriptions of and how you can identify alkanes, how you can name them, how you can draw them, and some common reactions of which there really aren't many that you're going to deal with at this level. Okay, so like I said, alkanes are pretty boring. They are only carbon and hydrogen atoms. There are only single bonds between the carbon atoms. No double bonds, no triple bonds, nothing interesting. We typically describe alkanes as being saturated because they have the maximum possible number of hydrogens for the number of carbon atoms. They have the general formula of CnH2n plus 2. What that means is that for every carbon atom, there are twice as many hydrogens plus two. They are pretty unreactive um, in most cases. And as they have quite a low boiling and melting point in general, but as the length of the carbon chain increases, the boiling and melting point increase as well. So methane, ethane, propane and butane are alkanes at are gases at room temperature. Pentane and hexane are liquids, uh, and heptane and octane actually are liquids at room temperature. Nonane sometimes is a liquid, more off, sometimes is a solid. And once you get beyond about decane, they're mostly solids at room temperature. They are nonpolar and are not soluble in water. Okay, so let's have a bit of a look. So naming the alkanes gives us the basic idea about how to name all organic compounds. And the starting point is always the longest carbon chain. And for the f you need to know how to name carbons up um, name alkanes with up to eight carbons in the longest carbon chain. And so the prefixes that you need to know are listed on the left hand side of the screen. So if you've got one carbon in the longest carbon chain, it's meth. Two carbons is eth, three is prop. 4 is but, 5 is pent, 6 is hex, 7 is hept, and 8 is oct. And you need to learn those. Now with alkanes, if you've only got carbon and hydrogen and nothing else going on, then the infix is always going to be an, an. And the suffix will be e, so alkane, hexane, heptane, octane, etc. If your alkane group is a side chain, then you'll name it the same way, but you'll finish it off with, there's no infix, and the suffix is yl. So a two carbon side chain would be ethyl, a four carbon side chain would be butyl, etc. Okay, this makes a lot more sense when you see it in some examples, so let's have a look. When it comes to drawing alkanes, you're going to start with the part of the name that tells you how long the longest carbon chain is. Then you're going to count off the chain to put in any side groups or functional groups. So for example, here we have 2-methylpentane. So if we have to draw that molecule, 2-methylpentane, we're going to start off with our longest carbon chain, and pent means we have five carbons. So I'm going to draw five carbons in a row. One, two, three, four, five. Now, the ain means we have single bonds between each carbon atom. And don't mind my really bad drawing. Okay? Two methyl means if we're numbering this carbon chain, and we can number it from left to right or from right to left, I'm going to number it left to right here right now. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, we're going to number that carbon chain left to right. I'm just going to fix this up because that's really ugly. On the second carbon, we're going to put in a methyl group. Meth means one carbon. Okay, 
drawn like that is not good enough for NCEA. For NCEA, you must show all of the hydrogen atoms. There are several ways you can do it. You can simply draw It's a three, by the way. The hydrogens don't know why it keeps doing that, but anyway. In here. Now the risk with doing that is that you need to know exactly how many hydrogens each carbon is going to have. Okay. If you're not sure exactly how many hydrogens each carbon is going to have, please draw all the hydrogens on one at a time. Each carbon will always have four bonds. Always. So any bonds that are not taken up through bonds to carbons. So for example, I just made a mistake there. I had CH2 on this carbon. Should be just CH because this carbon, let me show you, this carbon here, has three bonds. One, two, three. So it can only have one hydrogen on it. Okay? If you draw CH2 on that in an exam, it will be marked wrong. Because that carbon does not have two hydrogens on it. It only has one. So, unless you are feeling particularly confident, I highly recommend that you draw all of the hydrogens out. Let me show you what I mean. And it's sometimes easier just to start from scratch. Carbon. One, two, three, four, five. Carbon. Hydrogens. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. No, it's not going to let me put that up there. Thirteen. 14. General formula for this molecule, C6H14, 6 carbons, 14 hydrogens. Now there are a lot of different structures you can draw with that same general formula. I challenge you to see how many you can come up with, 6 carbons and 14 hydrogens. This general formula fits in the category of CN. N H two N plus two. Okay, six carbon. So N is six. H is two. Six is a twelve, and two is fourteen. Okay, so that's how that process works. So reactions of alkanes, the main one you need to know about is combustion. And alkanes react through combustion. Combustion just means burning. Okay, it's not technically a part of the standard. You won't come across it in exam questions. But it is important to know. This is what makes your Bunsen burner go. This is what makes your gas cooktop go. When you go camping, your camp cooker go. All those things. It's combustion. 
Okay, and it's alkanes reacting with oxygen. The products of combustion are carbon dioxide and water. And all combustion reactions have the same general formula. The fuel plus the oxygen makes carbon dioxide and water. And I do recommend that you learn that, although it's not going to come up in this standard. You will come across it in particles and thermochem, that's level 3. You may also come across it in various other level 2 um, standards as well. Okay, alkanes can also react with bromine water through what we call a substitution reaction. Okay, so this is a reaction where one of the hydrogens is an alkane, and it can be any hydrogen. It is a completely random reaction that is not predictable, but one of the hydrogens is replaced with a bromine atom. Okay, it is a very slow reaction, and it must be catalyzed with UV light. Okay, and this reaction takes place with any alkane chain. So it could be in any functional group. It's not the functional group that's reacting, it's the carbon chain. So as long as you've got a carbon chain, it will react this way over time. It is a very slow reaction. So without the use of UV light, without time, no reaction will occur. Okay? If a reaction does occur over time very, very slowly, you will see a colour change from orange to colourless. The next thing I'm going to talk about in my next video will be reactions of alkenes. And this is a lot more complicated, so you're going to have to bear with me when we get to alkenes.